mirroring fact or fiction. It all comes down to the nature-nurture debate, the world's oldest chicken and egg argument. If facial and dental form is all nature, then mewing is going nowhere. However, first don't underestimate the knowledge vacuum here. Orthodontists openly admit that they don't know the cause or unfortunately any long-term benefit from orthodontic treatment. It seems that teeth forced into position don't seem to want to stay there. So although the science is poor, outside of orthodontics it has piled up and the weight of hard evidence in black and white clearly says that the environment is playing a huge role, one in which you can affect your teeth and face by yourself right here and now with significant health gains. There is an entire branch of medicine, myofunctional therapy, that does research, holds conferences, there are many societies, it has exams, and they regulate their groups. In effect, myofunctional therapy is the posh word for mewing. Clearly, this makes sense. Within dentistry, we have known for years that the teeth and bone sit in a balance between the soft tissues, the tongue on the inside pushing outwards, and the lips and cheeks on the outside pushing in. And this is used by the Frankel appliance system. The Frankel system both holds away the lips and the cheeks and also discourages their future use, training them. It's a very effective system, but it is designed to be uncomfortable if you do the wrong thing. The appliances are removable, so you struggle getting patients to wear them and it's not particularly commercially viable and it fell into disuse, particularly when fixed braces, orthodontics, arrived. There is also a lot of research on animals and in other areas. My favourite of all of these is the work of Harvold. In one particular experiment, he takes 32 monkeys, 18 controls, 18 experimental monkeys, age and sex matched. One group had nothing they're the controls. The other group had nothing but a simple, uncomfortable plastic wedge sewn into the roof of their mouth so that their tongues couldn't comfortably rest on the roof of the mouth. Nothing more. And like our ancestors, these monkeys usually have perfect dent alignment and completely ideal facial structure with the dental arrangement. Now, what he saw that all of the experimental animals were grossly affected. They were deeply affected. They gave severe changes in their facial form. They got severe malocclusion. What we would refer to as severe dental and skeletal malocclusion. You don't need statistics when it's so obviously and blind change. Now, then you go on. You've got some experiments of nature. So be warned, this is an uncomfortable, image for many. Here is a woman who has had something called cancrum oris, in which the cheek and lip has degraded. Now what's happened is because the lips and cheek, the pressure from the chips, cheeks and lips have gone, the teeth have moved outwards, the teeth and bone have moved outwards. You then have an image of someone who's had a stroke, and remember this is only the surface muscles. You get a much more profound effect, which I don't have examples of, when you have the power, deep power muscles like the masseter affected. Anyway, you can see here how the teeth and the bone have been affected. So this is quite a powerful change just from the surface muscles being affected. And then finally we have an example here, someone who was missing a tongue congenitally. So that's all their life they had without a tongue. They were missing several teeth as well. And you can see these two canine teeth that would normally be far apart or almost touching. And they're touching and they're still in bone that's existing where bone wouldn't normally exist, where the tongue would be. So you can gross change from missing a tongue here. You then also have some experimental data from chewing, both in humans and in animals. And there is a clear difference from chewing. And within the human population, what is very apparent is people with longer faces have weaker muscles, as we would expect. Now, I'm a fairly good example of the opposite. I have a strong jaw 
and a strong jaw tends to be a large jaw. A large jaw has space for the teeth, the tongue, and of course, most importantly, the airway. How do you get a strong jaw? Well, how do you get a strong any part of your body? You use it. To get a strong jaw, you chew. This is not rocket science. This is simply use it or lose it. So the science is there, it's just very inconvenient. But people learning new postures is hard. Getting fit, losing weight is hard. These things are all very difficult to do. So don't be surprised if you struggle. We have an app to help use it. You will need all the help you can get. If you're having orthodontics, then this is more reason to mew to shorten the treatment duration, to maximize the outcome and minimize relapse. If you are not mewing, what are you doing? 